Hello, Semanya. So, <laughs> how are you doing, everyone? Kang Min and I are extremely honored to give, the op uh, give this opening and um, keynote in front of all of you here. As community builders, both of us ran uh, the national scale hackathon event in Korea. Hackathon itself is not special, but planning and running it was special. So we'd like to share our story. Are you ready to listen? Right, let's begin. <clears throat> let's begin with this number. Can anyone guess what this number is about? It's 52 million. I will put additional number of 26 million, which is a half of the uh, 52. So it's like I'm the half of the original number. That's correct. There's a population of Seoul and South Korea. So why does this number matter? Let's dig into it. This is an infographic um, published on Reddit in 2022, which is nine ways of viewing South Korea. And actually, it caught our eyes that this figure is actually representing the number that I showed you before. That means that red area is Seoul and its suburb. And 26 million people live in that area only. And the rest of the land and the, the other half of population live in South Korea. That actually leads in interesting facts, meaning this is another one. So how Seoul people see the whole country? Now, the green one is Seoul. How is that Seoul? And the red one is airport. And the yellow one is Gangwon province, which is known as potato. And the blue one is known as beach, which is Busan city. And the Jeju island at the bottom is known as tangerine. But what about the other? gray or dark area. How Seoul people see that area is null. It means nothing, like wilderness or outback. But funny thing is, we are from Daegu, which is the null, center of the null area. We ran the hackathon in this null area. But you know, how was the event, hackathon event going? Um, actually, it was challenging but we managed to make it. So let's talk about this. Let me introduce myself. I'm Justin from Microsoft as a senior cloud advocate, but I'm here as a community organizer to represent cloud bandwagon. So now I'm handing over this mic to Kang Min to continue sharing our story. Kang Min, are you ready? Thanks, Justin, for the great introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello. I'm Kang Min, head of programming. I'm also here as the community manager of Cloud Bandwagon. I ran this extraordinary hackathon event with Justin, and I'm really glad to share our insights here at Loka. First of all, I'd like to share our initial situations. Around in March in this year, Justin and I had a drink in Daegu. We started talking about the possibility to run a big scale hackathon event in Daegu. We were skeptical, but at the same time, we thought it would be doable. So we did a a little bit of research about the current situation. We found many interesting points. Here are three points I like to share. I like to share. First, in terms of the end-to-end -end experiences, hackathon participants have no or little experience to deliver their applications that they built during their previous hackathon events. 
It doesn't make sense to me because the hackathon usually delivers some applications or rough products as outcomes. In Daegu, most hackathon events were restructured as ideathon that focused on planning and marketing without products. So participants were supposed to plan well, build a fancy PowerPoint slides and present it well. They built applications but working only on their machines. It's similar to the first one. Participants have no or little ex exposures to the cloud. Not even Microsoft Azure, but also AWS and Google Cloud. We asked uni students about the cloud. What they thought of the cloud is like iCloud or Google Drive or OneDrive, meaning mostly storing some photos or and documents. Some students knew the cloud, but only about virtual machines or containers, not anything else. That's, that's where we see the phenomenon called digital divide. That's where uh, developers living in Seoul, they, they have much exposures to the cloud, but developers living outside Seoul don't. We've seen this digital divide or digital extremization in Daegu. Actually, developers are already internalized it. We want to break it. And the last one, but not the least one, is that we've got no people for operation. So since I started this event, I recruited one person from my company for some paperwork. But that was it. Only three of us had to run this hackathon. Did you think it's possible? Only three of people run the hackathon? Well, we didn't think so either. But why are we here? Because we made it anyway. So although there are challenges I mentioned earlier, we started finding ways to make it happen. Here are some tasks we set up for the event. We assumed the participants would not have no idea of the cloud. So we like to provide them with six curated free online learning courses from Microsoft. That's called Cloud Skill Challenge. The six courses were about cloud, AI, data, business intelligence app, security, and cloud collaborations. We expected that participants would have some fundamental knowledge of the cloud for the hackathon. At the same time, we like to run an in-person workshop to actually get their hands dirty. They would learn the cloud through six online courses, but those knowledge should become their assets only after they actually use them. So we designed the hands-on workshop using this GitHub repository. Throughout this workshop, we expected that they know how to build and deploy the code to Microsoft Azure through GitHub Actions. We initially planned to guide participants to create their own subscription to Microsoft Azure and GitHub Copilot. But we realized that if they have no experience on the cloud, getting this subscription would also be a big hurdle. So instead, we set up subscriptions and invited them to the subscription to use the cloud. From the op operation perspective, because we have only three people for the operation, we would anticipate there must be operational hiccups that everyone would not be happy. So we choose GitHub issues for every single round check-in. If participants checked in with it or two, it's fine. Otherwise, it's automatically marked as overdue, something like this. We expected this would bring transparency. And this 
marking or labeling is done by automation by using GitHub Actions and Git Microsoft low-code, low-code, code power platform. We expected these automation tools would reduce our operational overhead significantly. But where should we promote our hackathon event? You know, we needed to sell our hackathon event to the local developer communities, including student communities. So we asked the student union at Gyeongbuk National University to encourage their students to join this event. At the same time, we also asked local government to fund and promote the event. Because those local government organizations are also responsible for the digital extremization. All right, now, I'm going to hand over to Justin to discuss what we actually did for the hackathon. Justin, ready? Right, thanks, Sangmin, for the great summary of what the situations were and what the tasks we are aiming. So let's take a look what we actually did to the let the hackathon smoothly happen. As Kangmin mentioned earlier, we curated six cloud fundamental courses. All the learning materials actually are already published on the Microsoft Learn website. And of course, they are all free of charge. So for the online learning challenges, we aimed 10, uh, 1,000 challenges. That means we had to send each time everyone, uh, every single participant is joining, we send a confirmation message, which is up to 1,000 messages. And we ran this online challenge for three weeks, which is 21 days for the end. Then every day we send a working in progress um, the message to the each participant. So um, the take up to 21,000 messages for the entire period. And every time each participant completes their online course, they want to send us a validation request then we are confirming your online course completion is done. Message like that. So we send a message up to 6,000. So bear this in mind of this number. And also we ran a pre-event workshop. We aimed 120 participants. That means we want to send the 120 messages and we want to conduct 120 check-ins on the day. The same thing went to the actual uh, the hackathon event as well. So we aimed 300 people to join the ha this hackathon event. Now, meaning we had to send uh, 300 confirmation messages and 300 check-ins on the day. In order to deal with all those the large amount of messages with the limited number of resources, operational resources, automation was inevitable. We had to automate almost everything except we really need human touch, a few points. So this is a sample automation workflow process for cloud skill challenge. When a participant is registered on, uh, through the Microsoft forms, then all the, the participants' details are stored into the database. Then um, the both confirmation email and text message is sent to the, the registrant. And overall process workflow for other um, check-in process on the hackathon day is similar to this one. So what's the behind the scene in it? So this is the behind the scene workflow process or workflow automation. So if someone creates an issue on the GitHub for the completion of online training materials or check-in to their certain round on the hackathon day, then it starts executing a specific GitHub workflow. And at the end of the GitHub Actions workflow, it calls another workflow automation through Power Automate. 
Then this is the power automated workflow that it actually takes care of all the um, updating database, sending an email, and sending a text message. We also developed a Power Apps application as a check-in kiosk. It looks up a participant GitHub IDs and check in the user. Then with this GitHub ID, um, we know who has checked in and who need to be allocated for Azure subscriptions and GitHub Copilot subscription. So I have shared what we have done for the hackathon event in terms of the automation. We also provide with the online and offline learning materials for the participants to learn before jumping into the hackathon event. Now, I'm going to hand over this mic again back to Gangmin um, to discuss what we've got as a result. Ready? Thanks, Justin. As a result of the operation process automation, we've got some significant numbers to share with you. Here's a result of the online cloud skill challenge. As Justin mentioned earlier, we aim 1,000 registrations. And here's a result. We got 960 part participants and 54% of them had completed at least one course. Typically, the uh, completion rate marks around 10% is the online training. But as you can see, the completion rate over, of over 50% was a huge mark. Woo, 50%, woo. Thank you, thank you. And here's the stats of the hackathon. We got 310 registrations, but on the day, just half of them checked in, which is the number we expected. But funny thing is that after the check-in, in the first, first team building round, 20 people has already ran away. I guess it's because we explained the rule and the expectations from the participants, and they got scared or they thought it was different from what they imagined. Finally, we got 23 teams passed to main round and six teams won prizes. During the Cloud Skill Challenge period, total 551 GitHub Action Workflow was invoked. In total, 1861 GitHub Actions Workflow were invoked during the hackathon period. Without the automation, our lives would be a lot tougher. As a result, because this style and this scale of hackathon event was unprecedented in Daegu, local newspaper media publishes before and after this event. And because of this, local communities pay their attention to our event. Even other organizations planning to run their hackathon visited our venue and benchmarked us. All right, last but not the least, we've learned something in both soft and hard ways. I hand over again back to Justin. Right, thanks, Kangmin. Yes, we've had a lot of lessons from this event. First of all, we could have paid more attention to the event promotion to the local developer communities. Even if Microsoft sponsored this event, initially, people wouldn't believe it. Their first reaction that about Microsoft sponsoring this event was that, why? Why would Microsoft sponsor this event? Even in Daegu, it's not so. But after this promotion video, from Scott Hensman of Microsoft was published on the YouTube, then local developer communities start reacting, started believing it. Oh, it's real. 
is now become real. So if any of big sponsor is a uh, big player is sponsoring your event, then it should be amplified as early as possible. The earlier, the better. We kept saying automation. We kept saying automation. We made um, our event fully automated. Without GitHub Actions and Power Automate, those two, without those two, our process automation would be a lot harder to achieve. And in addition to these two, we used Power Apps application and other SaaS um, the services like NHN Cloud API so that we can send um, the messages or text messages, emails, and so on. So with these additional tools, our automation has been a lot easier. But there's also downside. We created, and for the convenience, we created as a well subscription by ourselves, and we invited all the participants to use that as a well subscription. But there is a mistake, because we didn't put the upper limit for the consumption. So the total cost of as a well consumption was 3,000 US dollars. But only one team actually took one third of um, one third of total consumption, which is 1,000 US dollars, because we didn't set the upper, upper limit. So next year, when we do this again, do this event again, we will put the upper limit for each team, so that they will learn how to wisely use the cloud resources as well. Also. Our automation workflow has already been open source. So anyone interested in considering event or hackathon automation in general, then they can simply fork our repository, which is hackerground.kr, to use it their purpose. Of course, they need some adjustment for their specific needs. Now, we also considered the local community involvement, like university and local government organizations. But the good thing is that not only university student community was involved, but also um, the high school was in high schools were involved, like an IT specialized high school such as Daegu Software Meister High School and Gyeongbuk Software um, High School. So, because of those um, the high school's involvement, um, the, our event was enriched and broadened for the broader local developer communities. So, next year, when we start planning this event again, then we will definitely promote this event for both university and high school student communities, as well as the local um, the developer communities. Now, this is our story we have shared. So we hope that our story can resonate uh, your local developer communities. Thanks for listening. Terima kasih. Thanks for listening. Okay. We are really appreciated having us in the opening keynote speech. If you have any question, don't, please don't hesitate to grab us after the session. We are walking around the venue. Thanks. Terima kasih. And thanks to sponsors. Without them, our event wouldn't be running this smoothly. Thank you. Terima kasih. Okay, that's very insightful, yeah. yeah. Timekeeper, we still have time. Masih ada waktu? Masih. Okay. Right. Cukup okay. Untuk Q&A, kira-kira? Yeah. Yeah. Cukup lah. Cukup lah. Kita ada mungkin. 
dari yang telah disampaikan tadi oleh kedua keynote speaker. Mungkin ada pertanyaan dari rekan-rekan partisipan yang ada di sini. So please raise your hand. Bisa. Oke. Okay. Oke. Okay. Panitia yang bisa dibantu mikrofon. Uh, hello, uh, good morning. Thank you for giving me uh, this opportunity to ask the question. So, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Dafa and I'm from Jakarta. Uh, so, from what I heard from this keynote speech is that uh, uh, the hackathon itself hinged on the automation part on the GitHub and uh, so uh, for the uh, automation and the submission process, process right? Uh, so basically, uh, me and my friend in my college have tried a similar thing. Well, basically it's uh, smaller in size. So it's for my uh, classmate in my campus. Uh, and the thing that we found is uh, teaching uh, the beginner for Git and GitHub-based workflow is pretty complicated. Even for us who are already uh, uh, good with it, we are pretty. We are have uh, some kind of uh, problem teaching them uh, about Git workflow and then GitHub submission and then issue based and issue based tracking and something around that. So what uh, what I want to ask is uh, what kind of your approach in uh, basically like teaching them basic Git and GitHub workflow in your cor in your pre pre hackathon course. Thank you. So the question was that what's the, um, the workshop, the topics about? Is it the question? Uh, yeah, basically like uh, the pre-hackathon workshop is like how did you teach like the Git and the Git workflow in the pre-hackathon uh, How did you teach? Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, we had, so this slide, so we prepared that workshop material on GitHub. So that's also open source. And here, the, the purpose of this workshop was that they know how to code, right? Because um, they are all the hackathon participants. But they have no idea how to deliver this application onto the cloud. The how they don't know how to use the GitHub, work, uh, GitHub Actions workflow, like a CI-CD pipeline or application deployment or something like that. So. This workshop is focused on, was focused on how to build the application and deliver that application onto the cloud, that part. So we already provided all the front-end application using JavaScript and the back-end API application using .NET, Java, and Python. We built all the application from us. Now all the participants were required to build the application through GitHub Action and deploy this application to Azure, Azure through, through GitHub Action. Action. That was the main focus of the workshop. Okay, so basically in your workshop, you already prepared like the mater material, the labs, and then like uh, the practices for them to uh, basically deliver to the GitHub so they could like uh, have a basic on how to do the workshop itself. That's correct. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think that's enough. For Mr. Justin and Mr. Kang Min Cho, you can go back to your seat. Thank you. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Sama-sama.